Hey, welcome explorers to this week's episode. I'm joined again by my good friend all the way from Kansas. It's Jimmy. Howdy. And obviously myself from the UK, Jack. Again, there's no Taylor today. She's off fighting rancors in the outer rim. <laughs> so without any further ado then, Jimmy, how's your week been? Oh man, it's been awesome. Uh, the only negative this week I would say is the heat is starting to crank up. I think we hit 100 yesterday. That's not fun. Um, but we had an awesome week. We went and saw Chris Stapleton. Uh, do you guys listen to country music over there? Not really. <laughs> no, Chris Stapleton. No. Chris Stapleton's huge over here. We went to his concert, and then um, I'll talk about some stuff in the Force Counts. But it's been a really good week. Uh, how about you? Yeah, not too bad. It's getting hot over here as well, so I'm looking forward to summer. Uh, I've just come to the end of my leave now, so I'm now back at work, as you can see, back in my military room. Um, yeah, not too bad. Just going into the, the week itself as well. Uh, managed to get all my shutter point stuff painted up. So there, all my models and that are good to go now as well. So we're getting some more games in. So look out for more um, shorts on those. Okay, so what we're going to go into now then is this week's Force Encounters. Now, I know Jimmy's got something very special lined up. So again, Jimmy, take it away. All right, so um, Molly and I decided to go up to Hutchinson, Kansas. It's north about an hour or so, and they host the Smallville Comic Con. So if you know anything about Superman, right, Kansas, Smallville, uh, so nice. it's a pretty clever name. And it's not a huge con, you know. I'm used to, I mean, celebration and things like that obviously this is pretty small this is much a much smaller scale but it's you know it's a nice feel and it they've been doing it for a long time um we went up there and i got to interview some people and we're going to put a special episode out here in a little bit uh, sometime this week it'll get popped up there but we got to interview two people that helped create grogu have wow. been in mando have been in Book of Boba Fett, have confirmed that they were in Ahsoka and the Skeleton Crew, either as character actors, creatures, or doing puppetry. They couldn't say for Ahsoka and for Skeleton Crew, uh, the two women that I interviewed from Legacy Effects, you know, obviously, you know, Disney has them so locked up, but they were yeah. very forth, like, hey, we were in it, we we worked in it in certain capacities, we obviously can't say anything until the show's out, and I, you'll see from the video, I asked them, like, is it going to be, you know, just as good as everything else, and they're like, yeah, people are going to be very excited when they see it, so that was cool, these women were so nice um, and friendly, and so, like I said, we'll put those interviews up, I was really nervous, you'll see it, I was like, oh, like, you know, <laughs> these famous Star Wars people, yeah. and then, um, Brian and Carissa Thompson, they have a YouTube channel that Molly and I have watched for a long time, and it's called The Smuggler's Room. And um, having not been to this con before, I wasn't sure how easy my access was going to be to get to people. Because, I mean, you know, the bigger ones, I mean, you can't get within yeah. four feet of people. But we walked up to them, and uh, I was dressed like Kenobi the first half of the con where just kind of walk around taking photos with people. And he's like, Hey man, I love your outfit and stuff like that. And we we're talking a little bit. And I was like, Hey, can I come back and interview? He was like, absolutely. And I was like, I was kind of like, what? Like I just, I wasn't Amazing. sure I was going to be able to get to talk to him. And then, um, we sat down, he and his wife and I, we sat down, we just kind of talked about their origins of their show, which is awesome. We'll put links to uh, the smugglers room in the descriptions, but that show Sweet. was so cool. Um, he talks a little bit about some of the things he's doing, some of his, his love for Star Wars and how they got into it. And I mean, all three, all four of them, uh, the two women that work for Legacy Effects and the people from the bounty, uh, the bounty, the, sorry, the smugglers room. They were so friendly. It made it really easy. I mean, this is the first time I've ever interviewed anybody, <laughs> you know, and it was it was a little bit weird because I'm like, what do yeah. I know? I sit there yeah. and just kind of like I was like, well, I want to know this. So I just asked that question. But man. Top, I was on a high after that, just like 
I don't know. So it was really cool. It was really exciting. I'm glad we, you know, we started this podcast for that reason. And man, I look forward to uh, meeting awesome. some. And hopefully, everyone's just as nice as they were. I can't wait yeah. to hear this, and I'm sure the other explorers can't. So you edit it first. We've got exclusives coming up, then, have we, Jimmy? Big yeah, as an old cool. at the minute. So yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. I'm sure the explorers can't either. Awesome. So without any further ado, then, okay, let's head over to our Batu broadcast. All right, first of all, we've got Pedro Pascal uh, was discussing the elevated role of Bo-Katan in season three of The Mando. This has caused some uh, people to be angry, some people to be upset, some people love it, um, depending on you know their love of those two characters. Pedro Pascal makes it very clear that he's not... That not only is he fully on board with Din Djarin taking a step back from the limelight, but that he is a big and longtime fan of Katie Sackhoff and her work, and he believes that she can carry the show. Um, and I think we've talked about a little bit. It's called yeah. The Mandalorian. It's not called Din Djarin. So as long as The Mandalorian's in play and things like that, I, I think the show has grown enough that um, I can get there. What do you, what do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Berkutan. A big, big fan. I met her at Celebration as well. Absolute legend. I got her to write on the, my son's phone cap. Uh, she gave us a signature. She put the true rule of Mandalore uh, <laughs> and the moves and that that she does in the Mandalore. And I think she's amazing. And personally, mm. I would not mind if the long light was Bo-Katan and not Din Djarin. But yeah, big, big fan of Bo-Katan. I think too, like he's a gunslinger. He's not meant to be... He's not Aragon, you know. He's not going to be yeah. the, the the king. He's going to be the guy who gets the work done. So yeah, I'm excited to see where that goes. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito has claimed he knows nothing about the fourth season of the of Star Wars: The Mandalorian. Although he would be excited to return if Moff Gideon, as Moff Gideon, um, if the incorporation of the clones in the last season allow for a comeback. So that's been speculation. Uh, central with that is having seen those clones. In those last couple episodes of him, you know, my question was, was that a clone that they killed? Yeah. Is he off somewhere chilling like Nick Fury style up in space or, yeah. you know? I think it begs the question now or it opens it up more rather than that anything, truly anything now is possible. I just, just hope we don't get into a mess where we've got clones of clones of clones running around everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a bit much. I hope they keep it clean and don't, you know, if they bring him back and it fits the story, great. Don't just bring yeah. him back because he's an awesome actor and people love yeah. the character. Like, you got to have, uh, there's got to be repercussions to your actions, I think. Yeah, 100%. Uh, London Film Comic Con, which is happening uh, in the UK and London, obviously, from between the 5th and the 7th of July. Like we mentioned the other episodes, guests like Timur Morrison from the Book of Boba Fett make an appearance, but there's also now a dedicated Star Wars zone where all the fans and podcasters are going to be hanging out. People like uh, Fan for Track, Star Wars Sessions, there's absolutely tons and tons of people. Jedi News are going to be there, and obviously the UKG in costume in full force, they're going to be there. So if you are going down to London Film Comic Con, uh, obviously that's the place to go if you're a massive um, Star Wars fan. Just sticking with the themes of the Comic Con then, Anthony Daniels has been confirmed for the Comic Con that's coming up in uh, Africa. More dates for that to um, follow. And touching on from uh, the other week's news as well, Galactic Star Cruiser and Celebration merchandise is now available at Shop Disney. However, the Galactic Star Cruiser stuff is only available in the US Disney Store. What do you think about that, Jimmy? Um... I guess they're trying to get rid of all the surplus <laughs> for the um, the store. I guess it'll probably be a hot ticket item. You might grab yeah. a couple things, and then uh, if you or Taylor need anything, you let me know. <laughs> Any of the explorers, let me know. I'll hook you up, get you some yeah. American goods uh, awesome. on the black market. <laughs> so, uh, will you be going the to the? Room. Yeah, will you be going to the London Film and Comic Con? Uh, I'm going to see if I can get um, some time off because obviously I've got to juggle up with my family and everything like that. Uh, but I might try and go with the UKG lot um, as my stand trooper because nine times out of ten, if I do go in costume, I can get closer to the uh, stars if, and that if you like. Very cool, very cool. Uh, and that pretty much wraps up the news um, for this week. 
Uh, and what we're going to go into now then is our Rebel Rundown. Rebel Rundown. You rebel, you rebel, you rebel scum. Rebel Rundown. I rebel. I rebel. All right, yes, awesome. Uh, so this week on the Rebel Rundown, we've got the Bendu. Now, this is a character that if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, you may not have ever heard of before. Um, we put out a couple questions, a couple feelers. You know, this is our series. We're breaking down the Rebels characters, the Star Wars Rebels characters that we think, you know, are important, how they drove the story. And that, especially now that Rosario Dawson has said and Dave Filoni have said, that the Ahsoka show is basically season five of Rebels. So a lot of these people could come back. Now, this one might be a stretch, but yeah. if it showed up on live action, I would probably lose my mind. Um, the Bendu voiced by Tom Baker. Ah, you heard my call. Good. Your imbalance woke me from a deep slumber. Imbalance. Jedi and Sith wield the Ashlar and Bogan, the light and the dark. I'm the one in the middle, the Bendu. Baker. What do you? Um, and we put out, like I said, we put out feelers on, uh, a, you know, Facebook and all of our socials, and we got slammed with um, opinions. And people loved, loved this character. I was a little concerned. I'll be honest. I was a little worried because he doesn't have a big role in the show. But um, one of the, you know, off, we got most of these off of Facebook. But so Christopher uh, P says, I just loved him. So much potential for this character. I feel like since he's so ancient, he could appear in many different time frames and projects. But yeah, I'm definitely welcome an appearance in Ahsoka. It would make sense. And I didn't think about that. Showing up in different time periods. You know, we got these new movies yeah. coming out that are all over the place. That would be the yeah. key. Another comment that we got from uh, Nemanja P says he could add much more to the story in the future. There is so much potential for him because we all know stuff about Dark and the light side of the Force, but we haven't seen or heard almost anything about this neutral side. He is a Grey in some way. Again, this ties in the Ahsoka stuff, where she is no longer a Jedi. Um, he also goes on to mention that we already saw in Rebels that his neutral aspect of the Force can be used for someone's purposes. And Bendu's philosophy is also great, and it can affect anyone who lost his way from the Dark or the light path to help them find their way back. There can be more entities like the one we saw in the Rebels on different planets and different parts of the galaxy, and all of them would be the one Bendu, a neutral aspect of the Force. Just like there is no only one manifestation of the light or dark side, there can be many. Masters and practical users of both uh, philosophies, there is only uh, no only one Jedi Master or Jedi Temple, for example. We could have a third way for Force wielders. Not Sith way, not Jedi way, but those who want to be in the middle, Bendu way. Very interesting. And then and like it goes on to say, uh, I just think there are too many possibilities of neutral aspect that writers could explore and use in the future. And again, I totally agree with what the manager is saying there. It would be a big ask uh, to get a live um, version of Bendu on the scene. Can it be done? If anyone can do it, Dave can do it. Um, yes, would absolutely love to see a bit more about this grey side mm -hmm. of the force, I think, especially with the High Republic Again, pushing stuff, you know, it's hard to tie together now. Um, so I would not put it past them. Yeah, uh, Kevin L. says, One of my favorite things about Rebels is the Bendu. The fine line that exists between light and dark. While Bendu is neither, the power to be grounded and separated of both, in my mind, is more powerful than either one alone. He simply is what he is. That's a, <laughs> that's a good, good, uh, good call out there, Kevin. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Justin M., I love the idea of Bendu, the one in the middle. The Force belongs to all in the galaxy, not just Jedi and Sith. To find Force-sensitive creatures should be the norm. Now, I'm not saying every Force-sensitive creature should be able to manipulate the Force and use it like a Jedi or a Sith, but to have their own subtle powers. I feel like Bendu would be a great introduction to the wills for anyone who is unfamiliar with them, and just a point in Star Wars where we can open the horizon of the Force beyond that of the Jedi slash Sith. Just with that, where Justin mentions introduction to the wills, if I, 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 I pronounce that correctly, the wills, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Journal what's of the, the Wills. What's the wills? The Journal of the Wills, those are the Guardians. That's your um, Baze uh, Malbus and Chirrut Imwe from Rogue One. 
Nice. They're a guardian nice. so we, of the wills. So we could have uh, we could have links back to Jedi then, for example. Yeah, I mean, they've the with the way Lucasfilm and Lucas Publishing and Press have been doing things, they have really been driving Jedi to the forefront of things. And you, know, yeah. when you think about, and again, I keep singing this praise, but Gareth Edwards bringing Jedi probably had no idea what he was starting when he brought Jedi back into the mix. So very good. Um, let me see, where are we here? All right, Melody S. I think he's. I think he is a deity, not merely a powerful being, similar to the Greek and Roman gods who could take physical form when they chose. I love that the Bendu was part of Canaan's scene clearly only after losing his physical sight. Yeah, he has a big role in helping Canaan Jarrus. Um, but yeah, I like that kind of, you know, that's his worldly form, I guess, you know, like yeah. Zeus and them coming down, looking like being a bull and dancing around on the beaches and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And lastly, though, we've got Beverly B. I think he is the Bendu, trying to define all that he is and represents or would be against what he stands for. I think he had the right and represents true balance, what Anakin could have been if he'd listened to the father in the, in the father, son and daughter arc of the Clone Wars. Yeah, totally agree again with what Beverly's saying there. I think he is something that represents the true balance of the Force in that neutral aspect, as all the uh, people commented on there. Again, thank you so much to everybody that's commented. Apologies for those that didn't com um, get their comment read out. Like Jimmy said, we did get absolutely slammed uh, with almost 100 comments, I think it was. Uh, but keep commenting. Uh, next week, we'll choose some different people and we'll read your thoughts and comments out. Yeah, and if you are a Rebels fan and you have not joined the Rebel Star Wars Rebels Facebook page, that is the place you got to be. There's about 50,000 people a part of it, and it's pretty um it's very friendly and everyone just talks some star wars and really talks rebels so you should join up look it up look it up on facebook Clap day so the ben do then so in our own opinion then jim we'll start with you okay what do you think or what's your opinion on what the ben do is or who is the ben do i don't get into a lot of like speculation you know, we've talked about this before i like just to take it what it is and dive into it but the Bendu has been something that has spoken to me on a different level, I think. I believe that the Bendu is a title and not a name. Okay. Because he, multiple times in the short amount of time we see him in Rebels, he says, I am the Bendu, the one in the middle. And I think, and you know, and I have a theory, it's a little kind of far-fetched, but I believe that like Ahsoka could become a Bendu. Like, I think it's a title of someone who's uh. neutral in the force, you know, and I know this is going to probably make some people's brains melt uh, thinking about gray Jedi. And I don't think it's a gray or a light side, dark side thing. I think it is a neutral, um, you know, being even because the Bendu does both things. So, you know, that's just yeah. something I have. I could be completely wrong. I really enjoyed this character for what we got on screen, you know, and a little bit of speculation I do, I do think that the Bendu is a title for yeah. creatures or people that have reached a level of um, balance in the force, you know, now that kind of, the only thing I, the only really thing that kind of kicks, kicks a hole in my theory is Yoda probably, because he's been around for so long, but who yeah. knows how long the Bendu, like, like us, some of our um, people have said, you know, the Bendu is an ancient being, so it could be even, you know, 800 years, 900 years of Yoda's life could be a drop in the hat, you know, oh, yeah. drop in the bucket to uh, what the Bendu has done. So, yeah. So for me, I think it's a title, um, but I'm excited to, you know, hear what you think. Yeah, no, very interesting point there. Uh, I didn't have those thoughts, I'll be honest, before you said that, but now you said it sort of making sense to myself. Like I said, it being a title rather than uh, a being. It's interesting with the light and the dark side stuff that, well, with anything with scales, you've got to have something in the middle there holding the light, holding mm. the dark. And the whole reason that Bendu was awoken was because he sensed Kanan's unbalance in the Force. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head if Maul had seen him. I can't. I don't think Maul did. Yes, Maul sees him later on. Okay, yeah. So it's not something that's just for light side people. Then obviously we know that Thorn's nope. seen him. 
uh, and he had dealings with Thorne. But yeah, I'd say that's pretty pretty solid uh, bet there that it's a title rather than uh, an entity or hundred percent. We know that his why is beyond belief because um, obviously he has dealings with the Sith holocron as well, um, and he's neutral in terms of the battle when it comes to the planet that they're on as well. Um, so again, he, he has a really good arc throughout that last little. What was that to season three? Yeah, I believe. season three. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, he first appears to Kanan after Kanan gets blinded by. Well, by Maul, wasn't it? He gets Maul yeah. hits and Maul so he's kind it. of lost. He kind of loses his way, and the Bendo teaches him to use the Force to actually see. So, um, yeah. And then I think later on, Maul comes for Ezra. Yeah. And bam, he's there. But yeah. he does say this though in that episode. I just kind of I just I watched some clips before we got on. Um, Ezra and Kanan come up to the Bendu, and they're like. I'm worried about Maul, blah, 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 blah. And the Bendu goes, then just turn around. They turn around, Maul's there. They turn back around and Bendu's gone. Yeah. So maybe maybe Maul didn't see him. I don't know. Yeah, so almost there. Like you said, he they, they go to uh, the Bendu for answers, uh, essentially. But rather than telling them to turn around, he, t- he, advised, he advised them not to turn around mm-hmm. because Maul was, sorry, Ezra was having visions of Maul throughout the ship. Uh, and they went to, for advice, uh, yeah, and that's when Bendu said, "Don't turn around." But again, like you said there, rightly, they turned around, seen more, turned back, and he'd gone. So maybe, like you're saying again, with the Bendu being uh, a title and also to an extent an entity, maybe he's there when you've got that balance, or you're looking for someone in need, so so to speak. Uh, but it's very very interesting. What did you uh, think about the Bendu when Fawn and all the uh, Empire <laughs> did? Well, it's it's a you know the ending of that season, I think, right? That whole yeah. Um, so Kanan, you know, Thrawn tracks them down to Camp Chopper or Chopper Base, whatever they call it, yeah. and um, Thrawn chases them down and got them pinned down. So Kanan goes to ask the Bendu for help, and the Bendu gives him his whole spiel once again. I'm the one in the middle, and then Kanan says some things that upsets the Bendu. <laughs> And yeah, the Bendu goes, <laughs> yeah, calls him a coward, and nobody calls the Bendu a coward. And he turns, no. he goes from a, from being a physical being, he turns into a storm. You know, <laughs> kind of ties into the stuff we talked about last week with my force encounters with like the tornadoes and all that stuff, where yeah. he becomes yeah, yeah. a storm, he becomes nature itself. Yeah, and he just wreak, and he doesn't wreak havoc just on, um, just on the Empire. He he takes his lightning takes down an A wing. It uh, hits the ghost a couple times. Yeah. And then, uh, so, yeah, that was a pretty strong. And I think he, and then, of course, he gives Thrawn uh, how things are going to end for him. You know, yeah. he tells him how how things end. And, you know, everyone's like, what? Like, it makes sense when you hear him say it and you see what happens, you know, wrapped in many arms of defeat. Makes total yeah. sense. But uh, when, you know, when you first see that episode, you're like, what is the Bendu talking about? Yeah, yeah, totally agree again. Just tying in reference we've been saying, the force powers that he wields, where he pretty much calls him Mother Nature to do the business. Thorn being Thorn knows exactly where to shoot. And again, like you said, didn't like the advice he was given. So he decided to, to finish the Bendu off with a blaster shot. However, when he looked up, the Bendu, Bendu had already gone, already disappeared, yeah. where nobody knows. So again, just going right back to the start of the episode, do we think that we're going to be seeing the Bendu in live action? Ooh. I, I it's about an eighty percent chance. I think they could do it with the volume, right? Because they could yeah. digitize him, put him on the volume, and have character have the actors acting against him from the volume. So I think it's a possibility. I think it would be bigger if he shows up in the Dave Filoni movie. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. something like that just blow people's mind. But I think that we will see him sometime in live action i'm not yeah. sure which though I, i'm on the fence about both but yeah that would be uh that would be is tom baker uh still alive um uh, i believe so i believe so okay uh we'll confirm that voice that. you had to have that voice was yeah. he the fourth doctor i think uh that voice is just 
Yeah, oh, he was. He was. He was one of the doctors. Uh, Tom yeah. Baker was. Uh, what's interesting as well? Well, I'm just going to quickly look up now if he's still going. Like you mentioned there, with it being like a title, uh, for example, with the Bendu coming back, does he have to come back as the the let's say the cow mountain goat cow thing, <laughs> or like you said, is that title just passed on to something? Yeah, it would be curious. Um, I mean, that's that's a, you know that's an actually a, a great point because you could just have someone showing up that could be a nothing. It could be a small rabbit or a loaf cat yeah. or a whatever, yeah. and it could say, "I am the Bendu. I'm the one in the middle." And every Star Wars nerd is going to lose their mind, and of course, it'll it'll break the internet. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's an that's an awesome point. Uh, you know, like if it if it ties into the you know my silly theory about it being a title, uh, I, yeah, I think I mean, your, it, your theory makes sense, man. I think it'd be a lot easier to pull that off because if they're struggling to make a lot of action, Bender, as we've seen him from season three, ten times easier. It's not really that hard to put into the lore as well. And again, I'm just trying to think now: does each planet have a Bendu, or is a Bendu just here and there where the Jedi temples and Sith temples are? So that's a good point because um, what's What's the name of the planet that they're on? I Atal- honestly... Atalion. Atalion. Okay, so that planet doesn't have anything really on it. It has those mm. space spiders and everything yeah. on there. Um, but it has the force. It has an abundance of, you know, connection. The, even Maul feels it when he's there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's a curious question. You know, if each planet has something to protect it like that, you know, how powerful it is. But yeah, that's a pretty good question. I, well, that, yeah. that, that, again... It's making me think that wherever there's a strong sense of the Force could potentially be a Bendu, which again is making me think more about Jedi and Jedi now. And we know as well in Ahsoka that we're going to, uh, is it the world, was it now the, where the worlds meet or the worlds collide? Oh, oh, the world between worlds. World between worlds. Uh, so no doubt we'll be seeing some Force, some, well, no doubt we might see some Force entity or not. But yeah. We can confirm that Tom Baker is still alive. 89 years oh. old and still going. Woo! He can still yeah. be a voice actor. He can do it. Especially with all the digital stuff they do now. I mean, I oh, think, yeah. didn't they say like James Earl Jones' voice has been digitized? Like they have a, they have a, uh, extensive, uh, library of his, of his words. So they can yeah. continue to use that voice for as long as they want to. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I'm telling you, I, uh, I, I like Dr. Who, like I like all things nerd. I don't really know that character that well that Tom Baker played obviously, but his voice just phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. acting, you know, and they bring these characters, uh, these animated characters to life. Uh, you got to have good character. You had to have good, great actors. And, uh, Tom Baker ran, that was such a good get by Dave Filoni and those guys. Yep. Dave Filoni yet again, pulling it off. All right. We're going to go ahead and jump into those interviews that we got. We went to Smallville Comic Con in Hutchinson, Kansas. We were lucky enough to uh, get interviewed with Tamara and Don from Legacy FX, and also Brian and Carissa from the Smuggler's Room YouTube channel. We'll go ahead and take a listen to some of the amazing things that these people were doing with for Star Wars. We're talking at the same time. <laughs> she and I will finish each other's sentences sometimes. <laughs> we work together a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. So um, I'm here with Tamara Carlson Woodard, and from the looks of things, you have worked on The Mandalorian Season 3. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3, mm-hmm. and also The Book of Boba Fett. The Book of Boba Fett, yeah. you want to tell our listeners and our viewers about yourself? Well, I'm Tamara, and I'm a puppeteer, creature performer. I've done a little creature performing. I played Max Rebo in Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> so you're Star Wars fans? Yes. Okay, so what about fans. Star What pulled you into Star Wars? So what pulled me into actually working on Star Wars was I'm lucky enough to be an employee of a company called Legacy Effects. Okay. And um, I was, my first job on it was um, to work on the prototype for Grogu. Um, so, yeah, I got like the secret artwork on my desk and trying to build a prototype of this thing with people walking by going, what are you making? I don't know. I don't it's know what it's called. The best kept secret in Hollywood. Yeah, I had to keep that thing a secret for two years. 
um, wow. was the hardest secret. Well, not it really they built in paranoia with us, you know, because we're under so many strict NDAs and everything, and it's like it was so nerve wracking to did keep you, it a secret. Did you know what it was for? You just yeah. knew it was for Lucasfilm. Well, we knew it was for the we knew what show we were working on. We All knew right. it was for, but um, you know, didn't have much context for it beyond that. Yeah. And it went through a lot of iterations from what I've seen on like behind the scenes stuff. Like it was a two years of work building it. Well, yeah, the behind the scenes was really comprehensive about the all the digital and design aspects mm -hmm. of it. And when it got to our hands to bring it into the practical world, it, we had about three months to build it. it. It really kind of funneled, all the ideas funneled into one thing and came together pretty quickly once the look was established. Um, yeah, the part that I was involved in was I made a prototype. Um, and it had a, a just a ball for a head. Okay. It was like a stuffed animal toy version I made. You know, I built it to be the size that I would want to hold because we didn't really have. We had a, like a rough guesstimate of how, what size we wanted it to be, but no solid decisions yet. So, um, I thought, well, I like to say we need something on the dartboard. So I just made this thing. Had a blank face that we could velcro on three different sizes of Grogu's design okay. with ears that were hinged so they could figure out like how big how small did his head need to be you know that would inform where to where to take the process further and then i built the costume as you see it pretty much now um so the costume existed really before puppet really did <laughs> um and they took that to meetings and then from that he was formed and then you, you work did you puppeteer him as well on the shows? Yes. Um, so first season, not as much. You know, if they needed, there's four main guys that puppeteer him, uh, and then Don and I rotate in. Or now, as as he's used a lot more, we get divided up into different teams. So um, we puppeteer on him a lot more. But yeah. originally, season one, not so much. Um, but, but yeah, very cool. We very cool. Puppeteer him. What's the, do you have like a fun story or anything like that from like, I mean, because you've got to meet a lot of, like, I mean, George Lucas came on set to see him. And I mean, that, I mean, have you got to meet all these, like, uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni and those guys? Mm -hmm. You get to work with all of them. I mean, are they, yeah. are they as cool as they seem when they're, they're sitting there talking Star Wars? Yeah, you kind of get lost in it because they're such great storytellers and they're so personable. So they just come up and talk to you on set. And um, at first it was a little hard to get used to because I first worked with John Favreau. Uh, back when I worked for Stan Winston, and when you work at Stan's, you, very, you knew your place and you didn't talk to people that, you know. Yeah. Everyone's nice and everything, but you just, you're there to do a job and that's what you do. And um, so I worked on Zathura with Favreau, and at the time I had long, crazy, like my little pony hair, it was all different colors <laughs> and everything. And he had brought his daughter to set, who was four at the time. And apparently she had seen my hair and liked it. I didn't know any of this. A couple days later, I'm this on the stage, and my superpower on stage is sitting, standing in the wrong spot. <laughs> so I'm just standing in the corner, and Favreau starts walking towards me, and I think, oh, oh, I'm in the way, so I'm gonna move. So I moved, and he veered, and he started coming towards me. I'm like, oh, I'm in the way again. Jeez. <laughs> so I move again, and he just goes, stop. I'm coming towards you. <laughs> Hold still. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so, That's I awesome. so on the Mandalorian. I had to remember, okay, he's totally chill. He'll just come up and talk to you. Don't get all like weird and you know, ah, just be totally normal. And so now it's a lot easier, but at first it was like, that's, uh, uh, you know. that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they seem so friendly. They're great. I mean, you know, that Chicago celebration and things like that. They're like just two guys talking Star Wars, but yeah. they actually can do something about their theories and stuff yes. like that. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and they um, just love what they do and it just shows. So. Are you allowed to say, I, I, you worked on Ahsoka at all, or a Skeleton Crew? Have you been on any of those shows? I've been working on those. Yeah, we're allowed to. See, yeah, we've been working on those. Um, right. You know, we work for Legacy Effects, and we do a lot of different things, a lot of different capacities. So, okay. so yeah. Awesome. We, uh, there's a lot more Star Wars content coming. I can't wait. Can't wait. Thank yeah, you so much. It. It's great to meet you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks. <clears throat> all right. So we're here with Don Dininger. Dininger. Dininger, I apologize. Sorry about that. I don't care. And I see you've worked on Star Wars The Mandalorian, all mm -hmm. three seasons. All three seasons. And you got some work on Book of Boba Fett as well. Yes. Can you tell us about what that's been like for you? That's or what you do on the been shows? very fun. So I make some of the creatures, especially costume stuff. 
Um, I've been lucky enough to play characters. I didn't play a character in season one, but season two, there was a Rodian, and I work at Legacy Effects, and one of our supervisors said, they need somebody who's about this size, you know, to play a Rodian, and I do suit work. And so I think Tamara had said, well, why don't you use Dawn? And so then they had me um, send an audition reel, basically, of all my suit performance work, and so then I got the job. And then I've been really lucky since because uh, Dave Filoni and John keep hiring me to play other characters. Very cool. What's been your favorite character that you've gotten to play so far? Um, so far, I think it is the Rhodian Prisoner, even though like... That's in the Book of Boba Fett, correct? So out yes. in the sand, out in the and desert? I, I think because that was just a bigger character, it was yeah. really fun. I got to work closely with Tim. What's he like? He's very, very nice. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's That's great awesome. to work with. To, his energy on set is amazing. Ming Na is the same way. She's oh, she just seems like, incredible. and so the two of them together make set a very fun place to be. Awesome, yeah. that's so cool. And um, will you be working on Ahsoka and Skeleton Crew as well? Yes. Obviously, you, I know that's like you can't say anything, but I know I can't I know. say anything. But yes, Ahsoka and is it going to be great? Crew. Is it going to be just mm -hmm. as good as everything else that's come out? Yeah, I think People you're really going to like it. Ready to explode for Ahsoka. So yeah, I can't, I can't wait until August. Yeah, and you guys are like Star Wars fans, right? I mean. Outside yeah. of the shows, do you, you, you watch Rebels and stuff like that? Yeah, you, you know, I've seen some of Rebels. I saw some of Clone Wars. Okay. But um, fans, but now I'm a much bigger fan than I was before. Oh, I'm before. sure, yeah. And my dog's name is Vader. So My dog's name is Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get those two together. So, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. It's so nice to meet you oh, both. It's nice to meet you, Keep too. up the great work. Thank it's you. It's awesome. It's Max really Rebo, fun. that's going to be awesome. So yeah, that's a, a lot of fun. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Hopefully they'll just keep having us. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's so fun. All right. Thank you guys. That Thank was awesome. You. Thanks for coming here too. Oh, it's so good. It's Clarissa. 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 <laughs> We're up and stuff. Cussing on this podcast already. <laughs> Don't do that. All right. All right. Get my thin right. guy. Perfect. 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 Here. Uh, <laughs> Me again, we're here with the, uh, the folks from Smuggler's Run. We got Brian and Carissa. And, uh, <laughs> Smuggler's Room, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I, I know. I'm nervous. I'm like, well, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm From the Smuggler's Room, Brian and Carissa. And, um, can you guys just tell us how did, how did you guys come to this? This is fantastic. Wow. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I was building a basement. And we were building a spaceship in the basement. And I didn't like the way it turned out. So we said we were going to do it again. And then she said we should film it. Let's film it. Put so, it on YouTube. Just put it on YouTube. So we didn't know if there anybody would watch it. it. Turns out there's a few people out there like us that mm -hmm. want to do that kind of stuff. And so we just started doing it. And it became less about making the room and became more about getting other people excited to try something they haven't done before. Because you guys have a catchphrase. Yep, building something out of nothing. Right. Yeah. So, and then you, we've tried to we've tried to do a couple things. <laughs> it's not worked out. She's very creative, but I, you know, I am not. But so, Star Wars mostly, obviously. So, tell yeah. us about your love for Star Wars. Yeah, that's been my obsession, right? So, from, I mean, I was born in '77, okay. and so my parents were really into it. So, as a kid, I was exposed to it right away, and I think. For me, there's something about the this used universe idea, yes. right? It's the texture and the feeling of how everything is. And then it's also the people that created it. So when you go back to someone like Roger Christian, who was hired to decorate stuff, and he decides, well, I'll go look for jet airliner engines, and I'll take it apart and and reconstruct things in a different way. And then that allows... An environment that you don't recognize so it's not 2001 a space odyssey nothing shiny and new it, it's just all grimy and worn and found stuff yeah so that texture that's that's what got me yeah. excited i don't know what got you excited well i like um i was gonna do set design or costume design yeah. and then i went into interior design because i didn't want to leave colorado but then when we met, it just sort of fell into place. And the geekier he got, the geekier I got. And I love building stuff with my hands. So I help. And 
and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, so, I fell into it when I met him in college. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, what has been your favorite, I mean, do you have a favorite project or something that really like, does it stands out that you guys built together or? Well, I love Chucky. <laughs> Because I'm a bigger horror fan okay. than Star Wars fan. Absolutely. But um, also our Mandalorian costumes are just quite enjoy. Yeah. And then being them. able to walk around and wear them. Is... You guys wore them at Anaheim. We yep. did. Yep. Celebration. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. It makes okay. it feel really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you, you feel pretty awesome in those. Tons of photos. I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. An hour to get across. And oh, yeah. 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 Took an hour to get dressed. Yes. Yeah, it takes well. an hour to get into those. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I think if, I don't know that it's a project base for me. It's more of, it's the community that we built as a result of doing it yeah. is what's been the big thing. So once we started making episodes and people started watching it, then all of a sudden you started finding people that we're finding inspiration in one thing or another and getting really excited about making things. And so now there's this whole community of people. Huge community. And we, we kind of feel like we gave people a microphone and said, go for it. And now everybody's voice is being heard and everybody's doing something. You guys do a lot of challenges and things like that. Yeah, right? we try, so, yeah. Um, something that popped up on my feed, it was one about a year ago, you guys did a speeder challenge. Yep, and yep. So, <laughs> he's right yeah, over there. I saw that, yeah. So and you had a lot of people send stuff in. Yeah, and yeah. Cool things. Yeah. So much fun. And that community is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just there and you see these different makers yeah. and things like that. So yeah. That's very cool. And then also, um, you said, you just want to talk about your New Zealand trip a little bit? Like what you got planned out for Lord of the Rings? Or, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we... Yeah. So we build Star Wars stuff, yeah. but our intention never was to be only Star only Wars. Star Wars, yeah. And kind of fell in a little niche yeah. for that. But... but we slowly started making other things, and Lord of the Rings is one of our big passions. Oh, so, yes. so yeah. we've got a we've got a trip planned here in a couple of years to go down there. Cool. It feels yeah. like a pilgrimage, right? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, we did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you actually go to Middle Earth. <laughs> Going on an adventure. <laughs> Do you have any big projects or shows coming up on the channel or? Yeah, we've got a few things. I mean, one of the biggest projects we're involved in is an Airbnb. There's a lovely couple out of Asheville, North Carolina that they own multiple small, like tiny houses or tree houses yeah. that they do Airbnb with. And so they reached out to us because they wanted to build a spaceship. And so they've got it all framed and most of the wiring and stuff in the house is done. <laughs> so now we're working on getting all the interior design yeah. and exterior design we've been working consulting with them oh, on the that's desk fantastic. Yeah. yeah so that's going to be a big project um yeah and that'll uh, be on the channel you'll be posting oh yeah yeah. yeah yeah we'll keep we'll yeah. keep that'll people up awesome. to date when we start getting into it really and then i think beyond that it's probably just a lot of keeping up with the with the basement yeah finishing out the ship in yeah. the basement yeah because it's 70 percent done 60, 40, <laughs> 50. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it won't ever really be done. No, right before, right before we sell the house and yeah, move, yeah. it'll be done. It'll and then we'll have done. to start over. <laughs> very, very, very cool. Well, it was awesome meeting you guys. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. It. Yeah. Um, we'll make sure that we you know, we'll add you guys on everything. And sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's we do great. a podcast and do a YouTube channel. And like I said, we're just getting started. What's, what's the name of it? Explore the Forks. We'll give you a couple stickers. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we can give you some stickers. Oh, okay. Yep. So, oh, yeah. So yeah, yes, we did. Put them in my bag. Uh, no, you guys, it's really awesome. Right. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. Great. Great. Let's see. Uh -oh. All right. Well, I want to, again, I want to thank Don, Tamara, uh, Brian, and Carissa for taking time to, uh, you know, let me ask him a few questions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm um, sorry about the audio quality there. We're trying out some new stuff. Um, out in the field and so now we'll be back to our regular scheduled programming again thank you everybody for all your comments all the feedback the likes the share some subscribes we've hit over 100 now i think on facebook and just over 50 subscribers on youtube so keep sending the love we'll keep shouting you out super super appreciate everything all the feedback we're getting as well and it's helping me and jimmy and taylor out no end uh, join us again for next week okay where we're going to be doing some more of what we've read 
talking about more and the Inquisitors. And look out again this week again on our socials. Like, share, subscribe. All things social, explore the force. So, without any further ado, and I know Jimmy loves these as always. <laughs> An object cannot make you good or evil. The temptation of power, forbidden knowledge, even the desire to do good can lead some down that path. But only you can change yourself. Thank you, Bendu. <laughs> Very good call. And for all of us, we have spoken. See you later.